Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! And you mentioned Brexit. I hope to escape it, <laughs> but clearly not. Uh, today, uh, the Labour Party, this morning in Medway, uh, uh, launched its manifesto and its European election campaign. Mr Corbyn was there. Let's uh, listen to what he had to say. So far, in those talks, there's been no big offer. And the red lines remain in place. It's actually quite difficult negotiating with a disintegrating government, with cabinet ministers jockeying for succession rather than working for an agreement. It is in the country's interest to try to get this sorted one way or the other. But we can never accept the government's bad deal or a disastrous no deal. So, if we can't get a sensible deal along the lines of our alternative plan or a general election, Labour backs the option of a public vote on it. So, a big day for the Labour Party, launching its election campaign for the European uh, elections. Mr Corbyn out there kicking the campaign off. So, we'll now speak uh, to Labour about its election manifesto for the European elections. Well, actually, we won't because for the first time ever in my career as a journalist, which is reasonably long, a party launching a campaign document has uh, failed to put anybody up with whom we can discuss the Labour election European manifesto. That is quite a first. I've got a whole list of questions here that I wanted to ask. <laughs> I could go through them now. Yeah, uh, does the manifesto say that is Labour a Remain party or a Leave party? It would be nice to uh, know that. Is fudging Brexit causing Labour votes? Have you fudged it again in this manifesto? And uh, so on. Jeremy Corbyn said the local election showed that, the Brexit, that Brexit needs sorting. Uh, does the Labour manifesto sort Brexit uh, in Labour's eyes? And so on and so on. But... There's no one to... I suppose I could answer these questions myself, but um, <laughs> I'm only paid to ask them. Uh, if that isn't unusual enough, Gillian Keegan, we understand that your party, the Conservatives, might not even have a, a European manifesto. Well, I think it's pretty clear that we're a Leave party. Uh, we're pretty clear that we'd like to leave with a deal. Pretty clear that we uh, would like to leave whilst keeping the economy, which is doing unbelievably well, right. despite all of this, on, on track. On. Are you, gonna, are you going to have all that in a manifesto? If we write it, but, uh, I mean, yes, that's what we stand for. I mean, that's what no, we no, make No, but are clear. you going to have a manifesto? I don't know. I'm not writing a manifesto, but that's clearly oh, what we on. are. You're a Conservative MP. We, we are now beginning the European election campaign. Yes. And you do not know if your party will have an election manifesto. Well, it would be pretty simple to write it, as it's pretty simple to so write all why not them. have it? Leave, remain and why leave not with have the deal. It? They may do. I, I don't know. I, I don't know whether they are or not. I you don't know. So I let, let's just wouldn't, pause um, a minute to see where we are in British I think politics it's clear this where morning. The, where Pippa. the Conservative Party is on this. We've got Labour who have produced an election manifesto, mm. though uh, my understanding is a big chunk of it is none to do with Europe, but they have. But they can't put anybody up. And we've got the Conservatives who are here. They have put Julian Keegan up. <laughs> but she can't tell us whether there'll be a Tory election manifesto. This is. Unprecedented. Well, this was, of course, the election which the government did not want to, sure. happen. to happen. And it's still saying not only uh, now that it needs to go ahead that they don't want MEPs to take their seats, they seem to be living with this fantasy idea that somehow a, an agreement can be reached and the Withdrawal Act be put through Parliament before MPs take their seats at the end of the month. Now, July. I can't see that. Before, end of, yeah, sorry, it's before summer recess. It's before um, but I, but, but I can't happening. see that happening. This morning, Andrea Ledson announced that MPs are going off for a week's recess at the end of this month. We have three days before the European elections, the week of the European elections, where they're suggesting they might bring back the withdrawal mm -hmm. agreement, the withdrawal act, and give MPs another vote. But I just can't see agreement being reached with Labour mm. in time to do that because there's no way the government's going to bring it back if it's going to be countered at every mm -hmm. single turn by the Labour Party. You said it would be easy to write the manifesto, but though it isn't yet written as far as we know. Mm -hmm. But what would your manifesto actually say about leave if you had one? 90% of Conservative members of Parliament have voted to leave with the withdrawal agreement. Okay, So we have a small group who haven't. Now, unfortunately, that's enough to stop it happening. But more of all the evidence we have is that most of your party, uh, party activists, are against the Mrs May's withdrawal agreement. 
It, there could be, I mean, I've seen some of the polling where uh, certainly as you look at party membership, they are certainly more and more um, for a, a no deal or, you know. But or, or for a deal that isn't Mrs. Smith. So you, well, if you ever get round to writing this manifesto, and you've only got two weeks to do it, um, would be fighting an election on a manifesto that the overwhelming majority of your Conservative members don't like well they haven't you know it's difficult to, to, to say whether they don't like it or not and it's the same mm -hmm. with these guys 600 pages the withdrawal agreement is 597 pages if you read through in details it is actually a very sensible agreement in terms of trying to unravel a 45 year history with the European Union when I say to people which particular bit of that don't you like? They can virtually never answer. It is the political declaration or what they think of a future deal where all the focus is. So the actual withdrawal agreement, if I've worked So your members, your decades, members are too sensible. thick to understand what no, the agreement is? No, it's not is. that they're too thick, but I, I wouldn't expect them to read it. They've, we've read it on, our right. on their behalf, which is why 90% of us you, have agreed with it, which is why the CPI and businesses agree with it. You know there is no enthusiasm for fighting an election on the May withdrawal agreement there's, in your party. You you're know. right. There's no enthusiasm for fighting this election, full stop. We know it's going to be incredibly difficult for us. We know that there will be, obviously, a very simple message on the Leave mm. side. We can leave without a no, a no deal, you know, a kind of Noel Edmonds uh, Brexit. Simple slogans will be back to, you know, the simple slogans of no deal, no, it won't, it won't uh, project fear. All of that will come back up. And effectively, what you're going to end up with is more division in the country, more people not actually knowing the detail of what we're trying to do. And this is much more complex than anybody standing on those platforms will, will talk about, in my view. They never have. They never mentioned the Irish backstop in the, in, the, in the campaign. They never mentioned no deal even in the campaign. Now it seems to be a preferred position or a negotiating position. But this is all... We'll be back to the, you know, the peddlers of simple Brexit, and it is not simple to do Brexit. You That's can one say thing I uh, that again. Uh, it's certainly not as simple as we were told at the time. This should be open season. Yeah, you're, it's, it's, it's manna you're from, the Brexit party, yeah. you're the Change UK party. It, it, it's manner from heaven, you know, to us at the Brexit party, because what we see from the outside world, ordinary people look at politicians and look at politics and conclude, right, this is all broken. You know, Labour say today they were going to unite the country. They can't even unite their own party. You know, you've got Lord Adonis saying if you voted for Brexit, don't vote for Labour. You've got uh, He's Watson. withdrawn that. He's, yeah. he's withdrawn that. It's too that. late. It's out there. It's on the I street. Think he it's was given a statement it. to read out that withdrew that. It, it's, it's all over the UK and it's being believed. And, and what's happening here is that people look at these career politicians and think if, if you can't get us to leave, then maybe you should leave. And that's what this whole revolution well, come back to... is about. Because Sorry, you well, that, that, I mean, look, this is a hugely <laughs> simplistic message, and Gillian is right about that. And it's worse than a simplistic message. It contains within it lies. It's you have been lying about me in the past 24 hours. Your party has been lying. You have lied in social media in saying that I... Uh, believe that people who voted for Brexit are village idiots. You, I have you, never said, excuse me. You said me. the Post, you said the TV cop pieces who represent the Brexit no, no, party are village no. idiots. You, you lied. That. Look me in the eyes. It's in the Huffington Post. It is, you uh, lied. What there. I said was we need more experts in British politics. We, we, we need fewer, we need, excuse we need, me, we need, we need fewer people. Chris Graylings. We need people who know what they're talking about. If I go to a dentist, I go to somebody who knows what they're doing. I don't go to someone who is a village idiot. It said village I did idiots not... in the headline. Yes, it did. So, and so... you used to work in the news of the world, so you can take that bit out and distort <laughs> I it. I worked for the Times, well the Sunday Times. Well done, all over yes, the place. jolly good. So, so. You lied, and that's one of the reasons I'm in politics, because you have lied about me, it's and you lied headline. to people. It's in the headline, and, and, yeah, it's, and it's out there. there. But his point Ch is, Ch Chukra the headlines Chukra can be Chukra mis Chukra misleading. Chukra Chukra Muna called, you called, called the Brexit lied. party racist and xenophobic. You lied Listen, and you know you let me lied. talk, Gavin. Yesterday, he was challenged by two of, our, two of our party activists standing for London, one of whom is a Pakistani guy, right, one of whom is an Indian guy, and one of whom is a Jewish guy. I have who, never who, who, said listen, that people are village who, idiots who, for who's, voting for Brexit. Who's, who's I have never was, thought it. I have friends. Whose property you was lied. defaced with a swastika well, challenged sugar to a debate. It's going right. to be a great it's, campaign. It's, it's this myth it's that we're really... racist... Um, Gavin, oh, I never did you take it. Did you... Yesterday. Is it, did you, you said, I think, to the Huff, Huffington Post website uh, uh, that TV news 
must stop giving your time to the village idiots. There you go. No, what, 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 I, what, what, I said, what I said was that we need experts to negotiate trade deals. We need experts who know what they're talking about. It's like and the, excuse me. And the concept of balance, as seen in the BBC and elsewhere, I admire the BBC, I worked for it for many years, we've got to be very careful. We can balance political opinions, but you can't balance truth and lies. But you can't it, do that. Did you use the phrase village I d used it because I you was didn't. talking. Excuse no, me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I, I, was I, was actually talking, I was actually talking about Michael Gove saying we've had enough of experts. And I said, I've not had enough of experts. Michael Gove and I go and have our teeth filled by an expert called a dentist. We don't go to the village idiot. That's what I said. All right. Now, this is a lie. OK, well, you've made that, that clear. In which case, the Huffington Post twisted your words and, and directed The Huffington your, Post didn't. It to them. You did. No, it's in the headline. It's there. Check right. it. Look okay. at the link. Uh, speaking of village idiots... Yes. Um, <laughs> in the past three months, the independent group has changed its name to Change UK. Your logo was rejected by the Electoral Commission and won't appear in the ballot paper. Your Twitter account was hijacked by Brexiteers to change it to the Cringe UK Party. We don't know who your permanent leader is, and you've had to drop some of your candidates in the first two days of adopting them. How and we're still in better shape going? than the Conservative Party. Oh, Look. But how oh, is this, this isn't going to, in London? That's not a great track record so far. <laughs> I mean, are well, you being run not, by the village idiots? It's, 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 it's not bad for two weeks. Uh, look, I've been involved in this. Oh, three for, months? Uh, well, I haven't been involved with it in three months. I've been involved with it for two weeks. And in a couple of weeks, fighting an election, which nobody thought we were going to do, we're trying to create a party. I can tell you, I was hugged by people in the tube this morning coming here. That doesn't happen. We don't talk to each other in you the tube. You still got your wallet. Because they didn't take my wallet. No, <laughs> they absolutely Romania. didn't. Because <laughs> they think that something is changing in British politics. What? People have changed their minds. He changed his mind. He voted Remain a couple of years ago. It's fine for him to no, now be a leaver. Well, you, you're quoted as saying that on Twitter. But that's must not be right. All Twitter must be yeah. true. But well, OK, I'll, I'll, take I'll take your when word for it. I'll take your word for it that you didn't. When we looked at the launch, when your party was launched, and I don't think you were in right at the... At the I wasn't, no. Right. But when we no looked way. at that, of the Chuko Munoz, the Anna Subris, and yourself have had to come in, they look like a, a sort of bunch of sophisticated, media-savvy people. Precisely. But in a way, a lot of this, not even getting the logo right, it's almost like what we would tend to think of the U UKIP party has become. Andrew, I would love to have a great logo, but what I really want is a people's vote on all the things that you were talking about. I think if it is a, such a great idea, we should go to the polls and ask the people again, because they've changed their minds. People change their minds. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I, hands up, logo, it, must, it might not be... But it be. goes on the ballot paper and yours won't. There isn't a logo there. Well, is it? I, I, so there's no I, logo supplied. It came through this morning. Well, I'm, I'm absolutely fine not having a logo, but having principles. That's but why, why if you're a Remain supporter, and particularly mm. if you want a second referendum, which, absolutely. Is, which is particularly what no your party no wants, why would you vote for the, your, what seems to be a disorganised pop-up party rather than the Liberal Democrats or the Greens who have an established track record. Or the SNP in Scotland. SNP I mean, there are, there, there so are a number of parties that? who are in favour of Remain, and I hope the Remain vote is really, really big. But as you know, it's technically not possible in these European elections, given the timescale, to form a kind of uh, uh, unified view between these parties. I think Change UK brings something different. I think the people who started it were very brave. <laughs> They're not time servers within the Labour Party or the Conservative Party, they jumped, put their political careers in the line. And I actually think that politics is totally broken in our country. We've got people who are... Broke it. We're people who are and utterly mis broke it. We're people who are utterly misleading, and we've got people... I'm sorry, but who don't know what they're doing. The incompetence of the Conservative Party, the anti-business attitude of your former foreign secretary is f is doing oh. our country down and making us look ridiculous. I just want to respond in. to that because I've only been in politics for two years but I've spent three decades working in manufacturing industries, in technology industries, in airline industries, in all the industries affected by Brexit. I understand it. When I read it, I completely understand it. So I would take exception to that. I'm not the only one. Many people understand how complex these businesses are and how much they work and how much they've been integrated over 45 years. And those people are people like me who have chosen to take 
a, an approach to Brexit which respects the fact that for 45 years we've been doing it a different way. Nobody kept a wiring diagram and we have to unravel it in a way that keeps our economy and keeps the jobs for people in this country strong. So I absolutely take objection. I'm not a career politician. Your career spouters of information maybe, but I have worked in all of these industries at the coalface, I understand it perfectly, and I will not be told by somebody who either wants a no-deal Brexit as though that's doable, my dad or on just a real says. Coal face. Well, and that, well, I'm sure are, your dad did, and people, so did mine. But these are the but people, the people out there across yeah. Worcestershire, Derbyshire, Staffordshire. Exactly. They're crying out for real people. I understand. The career that. politicians who are doing this I am cannot from agree Merseyside, on anything. From Nosley and Merseyside, but they're not doing anything. Still, why we are trying uh, to do something. It's not simple. Why doesn't your party have the manifesto? Because, as Nigel said, we're four weeks old and it will come out after the elections. Until then, Excuse this, this, me, look, the Brexit I mean, party... Hold on. You, we've now got one party that's published a manifesto but won't put anybody up to defend it, another party that isn't publishing a manifesto, and now a third party that's going to publish its manifesto after the election, we have the I mean, this is go we've gone down the Alice in Wonderland <laughs> Hall, haven't we now? Because it's I not mean, a real election. It's four weeks old. It is a real election. This, this election is happening. You we, don't want it to happen. We Maybe do not want, to happen, want But it is happening. The people want it to happen. I'll tell you that much of free. Nigel Farage people, does. He'll still get paid. The people are furious about the inactivity of Brexit, and this election is happening. But why haven't you got a manifesto? Self-interested for Nigel Farage. That will come after the election. That's what Nigel said. We'll have voted by then. Until then, it's Brexit. Now, the only party on that ticket, there are three parties Means offering Brexit. Remain, there is only one party on that ticket offering a, a WTO, no deal, calm Brexit. There's That's no the Brexit party. No. That's what the public want when I'm out there. No such thing. Hold on, hold okay, on. Let's see no, what no, no, hold on. Let me just let's see what they let, say let on, me on, interrogate on, on that. You're misleading. Your, your policy is to leave on no deal. On WTO terms, yes. So, yes, so to leave on yeah. no deal. Yes. Without a deal. Yes. Um... But people didn't vote for that in the referendum. Well, people, we were told by those on the Leave side that not only would there be a deal, but actually it would be a great deal. It would be an easy deal. It that, would be a piece of cake deal. All of that People discussion. voted on the assumption that well, there would be some kind of deal. On that ticket, they never voted said, on no deal. It said remain in the European Union or leave the European yeah. Union. And, and to a great many people, that meant to get out. Now, what it meant yeah. to it get a out, campaign how we untangled ourselves, them. Or not. wasn't talked about at the time. David Cameron said quite clearly we were leaving the single market. That was he said that sure. over and over again on television. So 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 the the, the conceit. But, but Liam and Fox, the but hold on, Liam the Fox. That, that leaders didn't know what they voting for. Liam is why Fox, they want to vote on Michael Gove, Boris Johnson, even Nigel Farage all told us we would leave on a deal. Now you're telling us it's your party's policy that we leave on no deal. Well, after three years of trying to do a deal, which has been impossible because nobody can agree on anything... Because it's a hung parliament. That's, the, that's why it's Pippa. a But it is with the Pippa. MPs we have now. Let me hear from Pippa. Pippa. Also some of them. premise, as the European Union have made quite clear, where you need to go back to them, or our government to go back to them, in several months' time, having left without a deal, the same issues would still be on the table. We'd still have to pay the European divorce, the Union divorce bill. We'd still have to negotiate a trading relationship. Backstop? And not only that, we'd have to have a backstop. And not only that, but we'd be doing it from a position um, uh, where it's compared to now, much weaker negotiating position because we would have already have left. So it is unfair. It is, it is not... I think, as a, a representative of a party, fair to your supporters, of whom there are many, who are disfranchised, disenfranchised with everything that's going on yep. here and feel really... And it's not just, you know, it's all the political parties. It's across the spectrum. And just listening to some of this now, this is why people are fed up with Brexit, because politicians come on... They want to vote people for People are it. fed up with this some sort of do. level some of debate about Brexit. Let them get a vote. Let them get a um, vote. Let, let, are you in favour of the people's vote? Yeah, are you in favour of the people's no, vote? No. Well, no, I'm you, not. What, you think people because should we, be allowed to vote but no, shouldn't have a people's vote? No, because we should, I mean, we should enact the first lot of democracy first. Like, oh, that's yeah. the point. A democratic act has been passed and politicians refuse to put it but through. But they're conservative. That's the they're, point. Yeah, yeah, conservative that I've that. spoken to in recent days really quite firmly believe, believe in leaving the European Union, who say, who are actually starting, just a, just a handful, not many, but who are starting to say, well, actually, maybe the solution to this is a second referendum. Because if as you say, the majority of people want to leave, and we now know what, on what terms that would be, that would give people a clear choice. Now, that's a, that's a gamble what for people like Gavin's what party. Are you but nevertheless... If, if, if you're frightened of the people. No, I'm not well, remotely you know Remain it, it, no, have got a wave no, behind no, them, no, no, and you no, no, also no. know about the dodgy money okay, let, which has come into your party, which you won't say until right, after now, the election. Now you're lying. It will still well, be very close. Now you are lying. Dodgy money? 
Well, really? not the source of that money? Where's, where is the source of that money? Do so tell prove us. It's dodgy. You said it's dodgy. Well, if the it was proof right. is now on you. If I gave you £100,000 and thought you were a great party, I would be boasting about it. Why is it that your donor your isn't telling... Isn't, yes, it will declare has absolutely... The, has every party yes. declared all yeah. their donors? Why is it that your yes, donor absolutely. is so ashamed of you? They won't say, oh, well, why don't they say who they are? Because, because the situa why don't you say who they are? Are you ashamed of them? No, the situation... No. I, I don't know who it is. Well, they'll have to they not, not, Nigel does. Coming back he's to been the... consistent that <laughs> if, if their name is put out there, you're not telling us... You're not telling us where the 100,000 has coming from. But coming back to this issue of a second referendum, given that... Every prominent uh, spokesman and woman on the Leave side told us that we would leave with a deal. You're now telling us you want us to leave without a deal. Surely that would require a second referendum, because it's very different from what was voted on in 2016. We could argue that forever, but, you know, many people believe... Well, many people believe that they voted just to get out of the European Union. Many people There's have no interpreted it differently since line. But the point is, exist. we have a bunch of, of politicians and civil servants going to Brussels... Trying to be accountable to get ...unable to do a deal after three years, We've and the general deal. public out there see this as incompetence, and they see We've it as people that need to All be right. replaced. Just a hung parliament won't pass it. There yeah. is a deal. Gavin Esler, can I just... I've got the full quote now of what, of what you said. You said, TV news must stop giving airtime to the village idiots of breakfast. Brexit. Thank you. Or breakfast. I've Thank often, you. I you often have breakfast no, with village idiots. Um, anyway, no. then, TV news must give, stop giving airtime to the village idiots of Brexit. The Case dubious... Claim. Would you be quiet while I get this Sorry. quote out? I don't think Sorry. it's ever been quiet. The dubious right-wing supposed think tanks, in quotes, yes. and pseudo-experts yes. among ERG MPs who simply haven't a clue what the implications of Brexit yeah. He's truly not saying are. He's I'm not saying, saying the same No, no, that, I understand. You, no, but this is a lie. It was not voters. It's absolutely clear. So, you so, selectively... So I'm a village idiot. Did you, no. Well, you I, did, I, you, I, I, well, you, you can self-identify as one if you like, but no, you are no, doing... No, you identified me as one. No, I didn't. I'm a, I, I'm I identified you as a liar, and I do it again. The quote's there. Right. Can't wait till you're in Parliament. But can I just say, it's quite <laughs> difficult, though, Gavin Esler, as you, you will know, for an organisation like the BBC, the, the MPs who represent the ERG, they, they are elected members of Parliament. No, they I, have I agree. a legitimate point of Absolutely. view. We couldn't... No, no, I'm not, I'm not saying not have them what, what, I, what, I, what I'm saying is we want people with expertise to be challenged plenty. about their expertise. Okay. And you have expertise, you've just, just said it. And there's plenty. But All not right. everybody. People have said some things which are clearly not true. OK, really well, with accusations of lying flying all around, picking like American television these days on Fox or MSNBC. <laughs> so I think let's go where? Uh, let's go to Transylvania. I've not been there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Not since I was thirsty. Uh, and let's go to the EU summit, because it's taking place in Transylvania. Our reporter, Adam Fleming, is there. Theresa May is not, because this is just the EU 27. It's about the future of the EU. Adam, what, are the, what do we have any indications of how they see a post-Brexit future? Well, first of all, Andrew, this summit was dreamt up two years ago by Jean-Claude Juncker, who originally wanted it to happen on the day after the original Brexit day. So it was meant to be the 30th of March. Uh, some people had a quiet word with them and said, do you really want to have that sort of triumphalist victory party sort of vibe? Let's do it on Europe Day in May instead, which is when some countries in the EU uh, have a public holiday to celebrate the EU. And here we are. Of course, the UK still hasn't left, so it's still not quite gone to plan. Um, and what is quite amazing, actually, is that even though Theresa May isn't here, Steve Barclay, the Brexit secretary, has been attending a different conference about the future of Europe in this city about 10 minutes walk that way. So uh, if you wanted to be charitable, it's proof that uh, the two, UK and the EU, will still face the same challenges, so they can still come to the same city to discuss them. If you're being less charitable, you'd say the uh, big boys and girls sit around the table here and the UK is relegated to, to a venue outside the secure zone. Uh, but in terms of what the 27 are talking about, they've just issued the so-called CBU Declaration, which is 10 commitments, don't call them commandments, about the way forward. And they look very 
very much like uh, commitments that they had in the past, acting as one EU, uniting north, south, east and west, acting where you need to, not where you don't need to, being a strong actor on the global stage, looking after citizens and being very, and having fairness at the heart of everything you do. All very much motherhood and apple strudel. But the reason they've signed up to those 10 very grand, quite bland commitments is because they want this to send out a big symbol and a big message to voters across the EU who will be voting in the European Parliament elections in about two weeks' time. And the message is, we are the sensible ones who sit around the table and discuss problems like adults, Look at those nasty populists and nationalists who don't want the table to even be here in the first place. Adam, thank you for that. Enjoy yourself there. Don't go out at dark uh, unless you've got plenty of garlic. We don't want to read about you. That's Adam there at the EU summit as they try to work out the future of Europe with the European Parliament's a new commission coming in, new budget round as well in Europe. I've been